Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's July 14th, 2022, and this week's New Jersey Delaware Bay fishing forecast is coming to you from Atlantic City. As they say, out where the sands turn into gold. That's as another Jersey boy once said, but you know, I don't want to go into that. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I am on the road this week, once again, here in Atlantic City at the incredible one-stop bait and tackle, talking to Noel here. Uh, he's had a flurry of customers. If you've never been here, it's at the north end of Atlantic City, which is, of course, some of the greatest fishing at the Jersey Coast, just around the corner from where Al McReynolds caught that jumbo striped bass so many years ago on the surf. As a matter of fact, when you come back into this shop, first of all, there's a big striped bass on the side of the wall. You'll walk in the shop and right behind the counter, right over Noel's head, is a mount of that Al McReynolds classic fish. So if you're tired of coming out on the losing end, make sure you stop in here, see Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle. I was talking to him today. He said that they had a shot at Spanish mackerel. That was on, uh, I guess that was Wednesday morning, just a little far outside. The kingfish bite has been phenomenal. We've been talking about that the last couple of weeks, right up along the beach. And I know he's been selling the heck out of live minnows today because of the summer flounder. Uh, the action that you can have right in the inlet, right off the jetty rocks. As a matter of fact, Noel also showed me the first picture that I've seen so far this season of a chunky croaker. So a lot of options in the surf at this point, all good news. And I gotta tell you, if you haven't been here in a while, stop by and take a look at the new shop next door. Noel has been working his butt off. He says he's about 90% at this point. Great looking new location right next door to the original One Stop Bait and Tackle. Hopefully it'll be up and running before Satfest, August 28th. That's a contest you're looking forward to, isn't well, it? I, I'm super happy about it. And, and I honestly think it's one of the best things going on for the whole fishing industry. This having something, a tournament that has to be on the beach. How, 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 how better can you have it? So I honestly think register for this, satfest.com. It's August 28th. 8th, right? I can't, can't get these other numbers together, but it, it's super great. Bring your family out because we're going to have extremely a lot of fun. We're going to have uh, at the historical lighthouse, we're going to have a festival there. Bring the kiddies out because everybody's going to be happy that day. That's awesome. Sadfest.com, check it out. Stop here, ask Noel all about that. A surf tournament, August 28th here in Atlantic City. Now, last week when we did our video forecast on the road, talked a lot about Sheepshead, and that's anywhere from Barnegat Inlet down. Of course, Abseekin Inlet and back in Little Bay, Great Bay area, they're around all the way down through Atlantic and Cape May County, even into Delaware. Uh, in fact, earlier this week, we heard from the folks at Lewis Harbor Bait and Tackle there in Lewis, Delaware, about a 9.75 pounder for Kyle Fagowski here, hamming it up next to that jumbo uh, sheep's head there at the scales there at Lewis Harbor. Kyle used sand fleas to get that done along the ferry wall. Matt Pagano also checked in with us this week, said he had a sheep's head on a sand crab that was on a bottom sweeper jig earlier this week, eight and a half pounder somewhere in Cape May County. And now with all the sheep's head I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, I myself sneaked out on Saturday afternoon into the evening slack tide with some shedder crab I picked up from Dave at Abseekin Bay. I also cleaned out the house over there at Chestnut Neck. Didn't have anything to show for it except for a bunch of small tog. Now keep in mind, we will get tog back again, one fish limit as of August 1st. And around that time, I would imagine all the shops, I'm sure Noel too will be having green crabs, maybe some white leggers by then, yeah, right? White, uh, and some sand fleas. Sand fleas as well. That's so by the point. time we hit August 1st, that's when you're gonna be able to find those sand cra crabs, or, or um, I'm sorry, the green crabs, the white leggers for your um, August tog jaunts, but also that's a good time for the sheep's head as well. But at this point, you're looking for fiddlers, you're looking for calicos, of course the sand crabs as we mentioned, all good options for you as you work some of those jetties along the sod banks and of course the old pilings and bridge abutments. Other summer visitors arriving as of late. First up, Cobia. On Monday, the folks at Higby's in Fortescue weighed in one of the biggest cobia they've ever weighed in at that shop. Millville's Tyler Smith brought in this 50 and a half inch, 40 plus pounder. Now, apparently Tyler caught that while drifting for flounder on Delaware Bay out near Miamal Light. So you never know what's gonna happen. 
The greatest thing about salt water, you put a line in the water, you never know what's going to bite at the other end. I also saw where Fisherman's Headquarters reported a 40-inch cobia for the crew aboard the pressure drop. Now, after going two for three on the, or three for three on the yellowfin, one on a pop or two on the jig. They also had some gator blues on the way in, but they stopped by some debris in the water. Lo and behold, picked up this um, uh, this this cobia that was um, that was KW, a first cast. So keep your my your eye on all this stuff floating in the water, and it's not too long before we might want to start looking at some of those lobster pots for mahi, hopefully soon enough. One of my personal favorites, as Noel mentioned to me before, Spanish mackerel, love them. And it's nice to see that they're coming into the wash as well. They also made their appearance in the surf first report from Grumpy's on Sunday when Raymond Nasto uh, found a few of these split tails, uh, the split tail speedsters in the wash. It looks like he was using a teaser, so probably plugging around for a couple of stripers, something like that. Um, that was hooked at Hooked on Lunkers. Um, that also found the Spanish mackerel again to start this week. Again, that's the report from Grumpy. So it's nice to see that we've got those Spanish mackerel in the mix. Bleed them, ice them, um, and cube them up. I like to put a spritz of, uh, of taco seasoning in there. What I'll do is I'll just saute them real quick. It's great for fish tacos. So you can cut up some fresh vegetables, maybe some mango, salsa, but those Spanish mackerel, if you treat them right, awesome soft tacos, hard tacos, whatever you like. Makes a great base for fish tacos. The other report coming out of the Island Beach area this week, the prevalence of sand eels. Doesn't mean we've got that sand eel striper bite. We'll wait for that until November. But if you're bucktailing fluke in the wash, they're looking for your two fish limit. Try a sand eel teaser in conjunction with your jig and fish bite fight club combination. For more than 20 years, Anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now, Bobby Matthews at Fisherman's Den in Belmar, he said the same thing. Anglers are taking advantage of good fluke fishing in the surf. Uh, that's also in the boats and also along the piers on Shark River. From Seaside to Manasquan, Bobby is saying the fluke bite is good and so is the king fishing. Just like down in South Jersey, you've got a bunch of options as you get into Ocean and Monmouth County with those kingfish. They're taking worms, clams, and sand crabs. Also triggerfish and bluefish hitting along some of those rocks and jetties. And I'm sure I know the triggerfish are always down here at Absecon Inlet, yep. um, but that is a good time to start looking for those triggers, maybe small. You definitely want smaller hooks, small pizzas of fish bites, or perhaps clams. And again, Bobby said the same thing. He's hearing about some of those Spanish mackerel up into the North Jersey area as well, as well as those sand eels in the wash. As for the inlets, that convergence of the cooler ocean, warmer back of bay, it cannot be overlooked. Shark River, here at Absecon Inlet, of course, uh, all the way down into Cape May, where we're getting some reports of weak fish biting on the jetties, not on the jetties, but anglers drifting bloodworm from the jetties are getting some weak fish at this point. I also saw this week where Bill Z was out on the full moon Wednesday, Barnegat Bay, nice brace there, a good fluke, as well as a good weak fish. I think there are more weak fish that are out here that we, we barely talk about because if it's only a one fish bag limit, but I am hearing more and more weak fish reports, especially from around the inlets. Think Corsons, think Little Egg, um, areas like that. Barnegat, for example, I had a uh, message from Captain Dave DeGenero on the High Flyer this week. We were supposed to go out drifting worms on some of the jetties there. I couldn't do it. Uh, that weak fish sharpie, Dave is always getting in the weak fish behind Barnegat, but I'm just too busy this week getting ready to head down to Orlando for that big tackle show next week where we find out about all the new products coming from the world of tackle. Um, we will be doing our report, actually, both Matt and I from Orlando next week. Keep, keep a look at uh, keep a lookout on that. At ICAST, you also, uh, it's its phenomenal because we always get a chance to meet so many of these great stars, right? Mike Iaconelli, uh, I always get a chance to talk to Tyler and Dave uh, and Greg Meyer from Wicked Tuna, Crazy Al, of course. As an exclusive this week to our freshwater guys in the tri-state area, uh, George Shower, just this past week, our Pocono Outdoors guy, had a few minutes to spend with the legendary bass guy, Roland Martin. So in about six minutes, we're going to run down our fluke and offshore. But first, let's get some summer largemouth bass advice from the man himself, not just George, but Roland Martin. 
Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, we're here at Hunter's Gallery for their Customer Appreciation Weekend, and who we run into with the legend, Roland Martin. How you doing, Roland? Hey, good, George. How about yourself? Good, sir. Thank hey. you for taking a few minutes to talk with us. Uh, you know, last time we spoke, we were in Harrisburg, and you were giving us some great tips for, you know, winter fishing and how to get on some bass in the cold weather. Well, here we are, it's July. What are some great ways guys can get on these fish when we're getting in those hot months of, the, of summer? Well, well, George, here's the deal. I, I, I'm pretty exclusive now fishing Central Florida. And I'm set up at, at a lake called Headwaters Lake, mm -hmm. and it's it's a big 10,000 acre expanse of hydrilla and weeds, and it's good for both summer and winter fishing. Now, I talked about the winter fishing and what we had to do with the shiners and stuff, but what people don't realize about Florida is it's not as hot in Florida now as, say, it is here. Right. You probably have hotter weather right now here in this part of the country than I have in Florida. No kidding. Because you have the oceans on both sides of Florida mm -hmm. and the cross currents come across and so the average temperature is about 80 something. Okay. It gets to 90 every once in a while, never gets to 100. Okay. Never gets to 100. So our water temperatures in the lake, in these shallow weedy lakes like, like I fish all the time, now it's July, August, mm -hmm. It's uh, probably in the high 80s, maybe in the low 90s, but that's still a good temperature for bass. Right. So it's great topwater fishing. I, love I, mean, love the I, can top I can take a little popper, a little pop 80 or a, or a devil's horse or mm -hmm. something like that and just throw it out on these weed lines. Now, in, in these lakes in Florida, we're really concentrating on these hydrilla lines, and the best lakes have hydrilla. Okay. And so I'm looking with polarized glasses. I'm looking at the dark shadows and seeing where the edges are. And I'm throwing my topwater plug and working it real slow. Mm. So that's the key to some of the bigger fish, is a slow retrieve. So that's one thing. Okay, the second thing is the mighty Cinco. I'm telling you folks, you take a Cinco, and it's, just, it's almost like cheating because you, a lot of times I'll get inexperienced fishermen out there mm -hmm. that don't know a whole lot about how to catch fish. And so they say, we, I need some help. I said, so I take a, a six and a half or seven foot spinner rod, a 20 pound braid i'll put a four aught ewg hook on it a number at a five inch cinco okay and i'll just throw it out there over the weeds it just barely sinks it just kind of drifts along and the boat's moving too and there's all sorts of hydrilla in the water water's five or six feet deep and the, and the thing just kind of, i said just kind of hold it and they just kind of drag it along and it just kind of drifts along and about every five or ten minutes something grabs it it could be a little bass or it could be a big eight pound. Could be a big one, yeah. And so we're catching a lot of fish easy. It's an easy, it's an easy fishery. Mm -hmm. That Cinco deal. Uh, okay, now when you want to get more sophisticated in the summertime, there's a, there's a side scan and sonars. Right. And one of the things we have in some of those lakes that I'm fishing right now, particularly Headwaters Lake, is there's a bunch of canals, irrigation ditches from the flooded fields, and there's a 17 big pits, big deep water spots that go down to 30 foot. And so the hydrilla grows on an angle and, and, and there's like eight and 10 foot drop, drop offs. And so I can take that side scanning sonar and I can spot the fish laying, okay. laying on the edges of the, of the hydrilla. And I can throw a swim bait, I can throw a chatter bait, I can throw a crankbait, you know, all these different things. And uh, we catch some big fish that way. It sounds like it, yeah. Be because one thing with the side scan, you can see the bigger fish. Now, it could be a gar, it could be a, a mud fish, it could be a could crappie, be anything. it could be any kind of... But the point is that I say to people about that sonar deal is that if you see no fish, then there's no fish. Right. <laughs> but if you see all kind of fish, there's a chance that some of them are bass. Right. You know, you know, maybe not all of them, but if you don't see a whole lot of fish there, that, that, that's a good place to fish. Well, so. what do you think about folks like that don't have the big boat and electronics and they're just fishing yeah. from shore, getting out? What are some good tips for folks who want to get started? You know, I do YouTube uh, uh, videos, and my most popular video was fishing a canal bank in Florida. Mm -hmm. I had over, over th almost 3 million views on that one wow. video, and all I did was walk down the canal and I had I had three different lures. I had a I had a we, I had a frog, mm -hmm. and I had a cinco, right? And I think it's something else. Maybe I don't know, I can't remember something. But anyway, I was just going along, and I had a couple different rods, and I just put them down, and I and and I, I, I made little comments like because of the mosquitoes and stuff, I'd wear uh, long pants, mm -hmm. and then I, I'd always on looking for alligators. But again, yeah, <laughs> alligators are no big problem. Really, people have a big fear about alligators in Florida. If you're, if you're in a, uh, there's a lot of good places like A1 canals and some of the, 
uh, Miami Canal. So there's a lot of places you can walk the bank. Alligators really aren't a problem. They're not a problem here either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can't hardly beat them. Uh, the Cinco, I mean, again, it's an easy fix. You can rig it Texas style, you know, it's pretty weedless. And the only difference is when I'm fishing from the bank in Florida, I can't get to the other side. Sure. So when I get hung up, I, I, I like to use heavy braid. Okay. So I'll go, I'll go with like 50 pound braid just because I can get my lure back. Right, right. If I throw across there with the frog and get it all hung in the weeds over there, I need to pull it pull it loose. So, plus there's big fish down there. So I use a heavy braid and uh, things like a frog, it's weedless. Right. You can throw it in all that. And well, I'm fishing, mainly the places I fish are weedy places. Mm -hmm. They just kind of, but yeah, my most successful videos have been from the bank. Some of my most successful fishing trips are just walking the canal banks. and. South Florida has just thousands of miles mm -hmm. of canals just all over the place. So, well, yeah, so we, guys, look, we can catch fish, whether we're on the boat, we're on the bank, whether yeah. we get electronics or not. Right. Use those tips Roland said, you know, we got top water, we got Senkos, chatterbaits. You can do it no matter where you're fishing. Right. That applies to not only Florida, but up here in Pennsylvania, New Jersey as well. Roland, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. I hope thank these guys you. get out and use well, these Well, you know, I grew tips. up in Maryland, so I know, I know a little bit about the fishing up oh, here, too. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that was a big deal. Well, guys, going to go out and get you some fishing from Pennsylvania. I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. You know, a lot of folks have been talking about the slow fluke bite off the beaches on those wrecks and reef sites. Undoubtedly, it's because of that colder water temperature. We talked about it yeah, uh, last week in the video forecast, but definitely because of the south winds and the upwelling, uh, a lot of cold water on the bottom, and I think that has shut down the bite. But that's not to say those fluke aren't there. The reports I'm getting from divers, they're, it's layered with fluke. So there's a lot of fish out there. If you're not getting the bites, it's been because of that cold water. So hopefully, once that water turns on the bottom, starts to warm up, those fluke are going to be snapping again. But we are still getting some reports, plenty of reports in the back bays. Um, and think about it, especially on that incoming water right now as the cooler ocean water uh, is coming in. Uh, that's being very helpful if you're fishing behind the inlets. But I did speak with Pete Perez and his wife Joanne. They were out for three and a half hours outgoing tide over the weekend, picked up a couple of nice fish, a 23 and a 20 along with a slot. They also had throwback uh, four keepers another three shorts while looking for those slots. Now these fish were caught in 15 to 25 feet of water, surface temperature about 75 degrees in that shallower water. Of course, that's kind of gonna be pretty much standard all throughout the range. Red salmon gulp on a one, one and a half ounce bucktail. There you go, red salmon gulp. Thank you, John Skinner. Your inshore forecast for the next few days looks, well, I say looks, uh, it's from NOAA weather. I mean, what am I supposed to say? But it's mostly light winds, south, north, northwest. After another couple of uh, rather blown forecasts over the weekend, I dare not even tell you what the weather forecast is for this weekend because I could tell you just the same as the weather guys. But I do foresee a beautiful day on Saturday especially for the 29th annual Duke of Fluke tournament out of Sterling Harbor Bait and Tackle. That's this Saturday, uh, July 16th. The captain's meeting is this Friday, 7 p.m. That's July 15th. Boat and kayak divisions. It's a great tournament, and it's also a fantastic party afterwards with a uh, pig roast barbecue, live music, big award ceremony. It should be a killer event. Stop by Sterling Harbor in Wildwood for all the details this week for Friday's captain's meeting. You can also go to Sterling Harbor or sterlingharbor.com for all the information. By the way, congrats to Mike Ramirez and crew for weighing in a 12 and a half pound doormat in the Raritan Bay Anglers Club Fluke Tournament over the weekend. Super nice fish there. I know what Ricky Bobby says about finishing in second place, but this is nothing to sneeze at either. Manuel Prado, he and his crew also hit a doormat for second place, 10.75 pounds. How about that, falling in second place even though you've, you've got double digit fluke. Clearly, the action is starting to heat up in those Monmouth County waters. Uh, it's time to think about rattlesnake. It's time to think about the deep water in Ambrose and parts of Raritan Bay. Those jumbo fluke are in. Speaking of which, Monmouth County's turning on. You know, it'd really be nice if all four Atlantic coastal counties were represented at the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. I'm here in Atlantic County. There's no Atlantic County recreational rep. In Monmouth County, there's no Monmouth County rep. There are two uh, Cape May County reps Bob Rush, Dick Herb, but only one of them votes. 
because Chairman Herb is the chairman, he doesn't get a chance to vote. And then in Ocean County, you've also got Pat Donnelly. Now the statute is set so that all four recreational fishermen are on there for votes. We only have two votes because there's still two missing council reps public, member of, uh, at large, and also recreational. I bring this up, I bring it up because this Thursday, 5 p.m. in Galloway, I get to go to my first council meeting since COVID. So I will be going to the council meeting 5 o'clock, Galloway Township Branch of the Atlanta County Library, 5 p.m. And I will be asking these questions again to figure out, A, when are we going to get those last two council members? We're going on almost two years now. No Atlanta County rep, no Monmouth County rep, almost two years. Nobody has filled in those spots. And also, the thing I talked about recently and what I've talked about in this week's edition of the Fisherman Magazine, we only have two commissioners at the ASMFC because the governor has not appointed a legislative rep. These snafus have to be covered. Let's find out if the council has any feedback this Thursday. And again, pick up online the digital weekly edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Look for my article, the editor's log, Dropkick Murphy. Not the song, no, but I may be playing some Dropkick Murphys when I go into that meeting, on my way into the council meeting, because I tell you, I do know for sure who I'd like to see shipped back to Boston. Now, for those of you shipping towards the offshore grounds this week, and I say it looks quite pleasant for the Hudson to Baltimore grounds. That's according to NOAA weather forecast, mostly light and variable winds, light three to fours in the NOAA marine forecast. That bodes well for those of you who are fishing out the rest of the week here in Atlantic City at the Jimmy Johnson Quest for the Ring out of Golden Nugget. It. Saw some good fishing there on day one. 437 pound blue marlin for Devin O'Neill aboard TLC. Well, my good friend Captain Mike Yako is dialed in on those big eye. Again, it would seem Taylor Jean and the MJ's crew with a 231 pound tuna on board. Congrats, guys. I hope that one sticks. Actually, hope to see another bigger one. On the mid range grounds, word that a, a school of yellowfin have settled inshore had Andy and Taryn out for a butt kicking on Saturday that was well worth it, with this yellowfin eating a sterling crazy eight chain. Now, Checking in this week with Tom P's offshore forecast at thefisherman.com, it looks like the Rezzer, Bacardi, and Little Italy are beginning to set up on the northern grounds with tuna. As far as the rest of the coast, look around a 30, 40 fathom line. That's where we're getting some good reports. Also, big eye in those canyons, like the Hudson, the Washington. It could be time at this point to start hitting the ridges, the Manasquan, Barnegat Ridge, and start looking for some of those fork tails. The Spanish mackerel are in close, maybe some bonita, and who knows, a couple of king mackerel in the mix as well. For a little offshore report from the west coast, out there in Costa Rica. Let's check in with Ben Gilmore, La Piora Vida. Hey guys, checking in here from Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. This week's fishing report, we've had some wide open tuna fishing just offshore, only 15 to 20 miles out. We've had some great tuna fishing here in Capos. The blue marlin bite has picked up and just this week we released a 250 pound blue marlin aboard my boat, Good Day. Fish of a lifetime stuff for sure. Inshore, we've had some rooster fish, We've had some nice snook, plus plenty of jacks, mackerel, and other inshore species. Hope to see you guys here in Costa Rica soon. Back to you guys. A couple of local tournaments to tell you about now at the Jersey Shore. First of all, the Point Pleasant Elks 27th Annual Fluke Tournament is fast approaching. It's next Saturday, July 23rd. $40,000 on the board is what they're saying based on 250 boats. You'll save 50 bucks on your entry if you register by Wednesday, July 20th. Get details online at pointpleasantelks.org. Also, don't forget in Cape May this Friday, you can fish with Philadelphia Flyers great Bernie Perron and play-by-play -play Jim Jackson. Uh, that is in Cape May aboard the Atlantis. That's right there out of Miss Chris Marina. You can get it, the details, and I would do so as quickly as possible if you want to do this. It's Friday, fishing with Bernie Perron. Go to BerniePerronFishing.com. Stay in there in Cape May County. Uh, the big news out of Philadelphia News uh, earlier this week, you might have seen it. Uh, the headboat Starfish nearly sinking in Sea Isle City after hitting the Townsend Inlet Bridge. Thank God. 
There were no injuries reported. Uh, I talked to Bobby Rush, who runs that boat. Uh, there were reports about a uh, Good Samaritan showing up to get people off. That Good Samaritan was, was Bobby. They reported it back that the boat had hit the bridge. Uh, I got to keep you in mind, it, right, racing tide on that high moon, even some of these big boats and great captains are going to have trouble when that tide is racing and creating whirlpools. But God bless you, uh, Captain Bobby Rush, for getting out there and uh, safely transporting everybody from the boat. Uh, he tells me that the Starfish is heading up to uh, Yanks for repair. Hopefully that boat gets repaired and gets back out on the water as quickly as possible. Wish me luck this Thursday at that council meeting. I told you I haven't stepped up. I, I haven't been to the meetings because we haven't had but one in public in the last, what, two years? And I haven't stepped up to the podium to ask questions in a couple of years. But I do wanna know about those missing council seats. I wanna know about the ASMFC. I wanna see if anybody's willing to answer those questions. Oh, and by the way, DEP, two and a half years ago, you talked about a regulatory package that was gonna allow us, especially the guys down in South Jersey, speckled trout there's no reason to have it tied in with weak fish so be prepared i'm asking that question as well it's only been three years guys i don't know what you're waiting for have a great weekend i'll see you next week reporting from the floor at icast catch them up my friends we kick off this week's dream boat update by congratulating james Bayesler of mastic new york whose giant 3.75 pound 19.7 five inch sea robin is our june fish of the month james will receive a tsunami of vic spinning reel and a dexter fillet knife the dream boat drama doesn't stop here as new entries such as a 4.55 pound sea bass caught by john wallace of cobalt connecticut pushed our current first place contestant dean paella down one point but not off of first place position second place for total points remains the same with bob carrizano with 18 points and Garrett Weir with 16 points. But the big news is our fourth place contestant, Eddie Terribly from West Islip, New York, whose 9.4 pound fluke earned him three points and it's 15.8 pound bluefish, another nine points for a total of 12 points and the fourth place position. We also have a new first place contestant for the fluke category, Anthony Mega from Suffern, New York, weighed in a 13.37 pound fluke. Fluke is our July fish of the month. Can Anthony hold on? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but there's plenty of time left in July and we're sure to see more entries. In other news, Joe Orlando from Kings Park, New York brought in a 2.9 pound sea robin. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. We had two entries hit the board this week. The first was a 37-inch bluefish taken by Tom Hode. And the second was a 25-and-a-half-inch fluke taken by Taurus Vebeliunas. I'm fully aware that I probably butchered that name, and I apologize for that. The leaderboard has not changed. Justin Oser is still leading with 11 points. Mike Razzuzuski is in second place with four points, and there's a whole handful of others with three points apiece.